Hello everyone and welcome to 100 Kubernetes Tools Day 8. Today I'm looking at two Kubernetes tools that come bundled together, Kube Context and KubeNS. And these tools will make you more productive every single time that you use the Kubernetes command line and need to switch contexts. Now, what is a context? Brief reminder for those of you who don't know, it's essentially the current cluster that I'm working on. Now, the current cluster that I'm working on and all the available clusters or all the available contexts are stored in a file called .cube config. And I can get a list of all the different contexts that I can work on by running kubectl config get contacts, which of course begs the question, why do I need another command for this? Why do I even need cube context? So let me show you, let me change the name now. Uh, let me change, I mean, the active context that I'm working with. So instead of get context, I will do use context. And I will just put in here the name of the context that I want to use. And you think this command would work, but it doesn't work. And if you take a close look, then I can see here I ran kubectl config get context with an S at the end. And I should be running here use context in singular form without an S at the end. So this command is a bit of a pain to use. So it would really be nice if I could just write an alias around this and do some sort of alias so I can run kubectl config. Um, and and I can run all that without actually typing out the whole thing, get something shorter, get rid of this confusion with the S at the end. And of course, someone already wrote that command, so that's called cube context. That's the first command that we're looking at today. And when I run that, then it does two things. First of all, if I run it with no parameters, it just shows me all the contexts that are available. And second, if I run cube context, and I give it the name of a context, then it will switch me to that context, which is really nice. Now, let's say I run here kubectl get pods then this will show me all the pods in the current context in the namespace that I'm currently working on. And by the namespace that I'm currently working on, in this case, I happen to be right now be on the default namespace, but I can change that. Um, I can change that per command or I can change that globally. So if I change that per command, then I would of course do here, let's say minus n cube system. And now this will fetch me stuff from the cube system namespace. But if I'm doing all my work on the cube system namespace, I probably want to change uh, the namespace that I'm working on. And I can do that with plain old uh, kubectl, of course. So I can do that with some big and ugly command over here that looks like this. And I never remember the exact syntax. Or I can do that with the second command that we're looking at today, which comes bundled with cube context, and that's just called kubeNS. So if I run kubeNS and I just hit enter, I think that will show me a list of all the different namespaces available. It does. And I can also switch, let's say, to the cube system namespace. And now if I run kubectl get pods without specifying a namespace, then the active namespace is cube system, and I will see pods in cube system without specifying minus uh, n. So that's convenient. Now you're probably thinking these commands are just one big glorified bash command, and you are absolutely right. Let me prove it. So I can run here which cube context that will tell me what file it actually is. I can run beam on that. And as you can see, it's just one big bash script. So there's no secret here. It's not rocket science, but it's two very useful uh, bash wrappers for kubectl, which I use regularly and I recommend you use as well. And that is all in today's video about these two commands. They save me a lot of time. And talking about saving time, I work on Robusta. And if you haven't checked it out already, please do so. It's an open source project. And we also have a SaaS platform and we help you monitor your Kubernetes cluster the right way. It is, in my totally unbiased opinion, the best way to um, monitor your Kubernetes cluster with Prometheus. And of course, I'm very biased, but um, I built it and I built it to solve a real problem that I saw myself. And essentially it takes Prometheus and it adds on the ability to also track crashing pods, to also enrich alerts and fetch extra data, lets you track changes and then correlate between changes, like a new deployment that you just did and the other fired right afterwards. It has a whole lot more uh, features, so please check that out and help support this channel. And thank you for watching, and let me know what tools you'd like to see me cover next.